Maurice Ray has been the owner of the popular Park Circle Creamery in North Charleston for many years. Now he's putting politics on top of his ice cream. I talked one-on-one -on -one with Maurice about why he wants to become the next councilman for District 3 of North Charleston for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Maurice Ray, welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you, thank you, Quentin. Oh, I appreciate it greatly. Needless to say, you're known here in the Low Country for your famous Park Circle Creamery right there in the Park Circle area of North Charleston. And now, of course, you are actually adding politics to your resume where you want to become the next North Charleston City Councilman to represent District 3, which is on the, which is right there near Charleston Southern along Rivers Avenue and along the I-26 corridor. Look, this Mr. Maurice. What got you from being an entrepreneur to now wanting to go your ring, your hat in the ring for politics? So I believe it's a new day with Mo Ray. That's my campaign slogan. And the reason I chose that as my campaign slogan is because I believe our city is in, it's, it's time for a change. Um, it's evident with the mayor election coming up. It's literally time for a change. It's time for our people to actually have a voice, a voice of impact. It's time for our people to have a servant and a, a, someone that's devoted to improving not just my city, not just my district, but each individual I encounter. So because of those things, yes, the time is now. In what ways, Mr. Maurice, are you engaging with the constituents of District 3 right now? So funny you should say that. We had a forum uh, last, uh, last week, Thursday. And uh, throughout the forum, we had several different conversations. And one of the things that was amazing among all of us was the fact that we have, we share the same views as far as our district. Um, I believe that in my district, it's, it's really time for a more impactful presence inside city council, inside city hall. It's time for a more impactful uh, presence um, with our community. And I believe I'm the one to bring that to the table. So what are the three biggest issues right now in District 3? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes, sir. What are the three biggest issues right now in District 3? So the, be the three biggest issues inside my district is heat, infrastructure, um, with, the, with the influx of new people uh, and new development. Infrastructure is huge in my, uh, in my district. Uh, safety, safety is safety is definitely one A and one one uh, one A and one B. Uh, we have a lot of senior citizens in our districts. We have a lot of veterans in our district. Uh, creating a pipeline for emergency purposes, for evacuations and accountability, um, as well as saving our streets uh, and minimizing crime, are the three biggest issues in my district, and that's why I'm asking for my district to come vote for me. So we could spearhead or continue the spearhead approach and get some impact and improvement in those areas. So how many people have moved into your district so far in the past two years? So on average, on average inside our county, inside our county, it's like 40 people a day. Um, within the district, the district has increased uh, moderately in the last uh, few years. Uh, we they just they got a uh, development project going on with a hundred units right now, um, so it's continuously growing. In the next two years, we're going to have at least another thousand and fifteen hundred people at a minimum inside our district. And, and so, let me ask you this: with that new development coming to your area, how many more people will be moving into the district with that? Uh, well over fifteen hundred. Well over fifteen. Well over fifteen hundred. And with that development for that, uh, I guess, an apartment for, for that particular area, let me ask you, what will, be the me what will be the median income for those people moving into that area? Great question. Um, uh, under six figures. Um, definitely under six figures. Uh, that's the unique part. But they also have the housing development, which the income is totally different. Um, the average income inside my area is really a fixed income. Most of the individuals inside my area, they literally live off the government or uh, live off some type of support. Yes, sir. And, and I, I want to get back to, well, 
let me bring you to the next question. So what is your biggest demographic in your district, District 3, right now? So the, the awesome part about my district is it's very diverse. Um, it's very diverse. You have a mixture of young and old. Uh, you have a mixture of white, black, and Latin. It's very diverse. It's roughly 45, 45 uh, between whites and blacks. And the other percentage is taken up by Latinos. Um, Latinos and are, are, um, the Filipinos as well. So we have a very diverse community. And what, I mean, demographic wise, what do you see that trend heading for your district? So I see it staying roughly the same. And that's what I'm, uh, that's another reason why I'm running. Um, I don't see a rapid increase or sway in uh, different areas inside my uh, district. Uh, we do have uh, possible issues coming up with gentrification. Um, a lot of the elder people are uh, losing their uh, moving out um, or moving on. So we, we have to be at the forefront of those type of issues as well so that we can have a proactive approach um, to prevent gentrification from really hitting our, our district. So how many people have moved out of your district in the past four years, Mr. Maurice? Not a lot. So the community, my, my district is more like a community. People come in and people really stay. And they try to stay for a long time. We have a very elderly community. Most of the inhabitants in my community have been there for like 20 plus years. Wow. And that's why, that's why I just want to carry the torch. Uh, they have made tremendous strides. One of the things my, my district produced the Northwoods Community Center. I had conversations with individuals that, that dug the trenches for the ponds. I had individuals that laid the bricks for the foundation of the gym, right? So my community ha has a lot of pride in it, and we're trying to keep that going. And, 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 and where we're, we're not overlooked by the city, that we are part of this group. We're part of the infrastructure group. We're part of the crime talk. We're part of the safety talks, and we are making impactful changes inside our district. Now, Mr. Maurice, where exactly is the city overlooking when it comes to District 3? So we have some issues with flooding. Um, we have some issues with traffic, uh, speeding. We have some issues with uh, burglary, um, just like any other district. Uh, the cool part about our district, it's not, it's not all the time okay. it's very spontaneous and we can identify the times like the holiday season coming up so we we can with the right approach have more exposure from the police we can have a stronger presence uh to combat some of these issues if we directly identify our true needs and, and what else do you need to identify right now to make district three stronger the next three years unity so the, the base of my campaign is to bring unity, um, unity in our community. And what I mean by that, my district has been fighting for so many years on their issues, but they haven't fight collectively. They haven't been one voice, right? Um, and that's what I want to bring to the community. I want to unify the community. I grew up inside, I grew up not too far from my uh, Northwoods Estates, not too far away from my district. And to move in a district and be comfortable and, and enjoy the inhabitation of the district, but also to know that we all share the same thing. We really like to be in our own little, we're good people, we work hard, we're blue collar. We just want peace. What other way to produce peace than unit? When you have a neighbor that you see, you can have dinner with them, have a burger with them, it's like the family cookout. To bring that type of atmosphere twice, Twice a year to our community to bring a fear to our community. That would be cool. Not a fear, but a fall festival. That would be cool. To give these kids something to buy into. To teach these kids entrepreneurship. To teach these kids how to generate their own resources and, and, and invest in themselves. Like, I want to bring all that to, the, to my district. I believe that we have a mixture of young and old. And we're at an impasse because we're young and old. And I believe that. It's time for a new day with Moray.
to bring this community together, the old and young together, so we can have a voice. We can enjoy the comforts of our community and make an impact, a positive impact in our city. And I know I'm being redundant with this, Mr. Maurice, but what exactly is the quality of life right now in District 3? Mm. So when it doesn't rain, it's good. <laughs> um, flooding is an issue. Wildlife is an issue. Overall, the quality of life in District 3, three is a great place to live. Uh, people live there for a long time. Um, we do have issues like everybody else. Um, and we, we've been at the forefront of fighting those issues. And my job is to continue to fight and continue the outstanding quality of life that we do deserve, that we do have, and take it to another level. Now, Mr. Maurice, you mentioned earlier about the flooding. So let me ask you this, then. How many drainage ditches, ditches are there in District 3 currently? So the biggest issue with the flooding is the ponds that we have. We have three ponds located uh, within the district, um, and they're causing the main bulk of the issues. Um, and they've been addressed... Uh, I think about two weeks ago, there was a city hall meeting. Um, they've been addressed, so now we just have to make sure we get resolution. Now, what other solutions are needed for this? So, they're going to have to come in and uh, re re dig the ditches. Re uh, I can't remember the name. Um, they got to clean it out. Keep it as simple as possible. They got to clean it out. Make it deeper so that one, uh, the water is properly filtered, uh, it's properly sanitized, it's properly clean, it's properly maintained. Uh, the wildlife is addressed. So that happens and the community, the community can't just throw stuff inside these ditches. We can't have our trash everywhere. So it's a combination of maintenance and policing of ourselves inside this district to not only fix but continue to keep this thing at a minimum once we get it fixed. Now, you talked earlier about the flooding, so what exactly would be an ideal stormwater plan for your district? So they're working on it right now. Um, like I said, once they, once, they, once they come in, once the city comes in, digs out, dig out the uh, ditches, clean them up, right? Now we can have proper, flow, uh, proper water flow. Right now, we have filters in place. Like, everything's in place. It's just not being maintained. It's literally not being maintained. That's the biggest issue, a lack of maintenance. Uh, there's been fights between the community and the city on whose responsibility is. And now we, we all have gathered together and collectively become one voice to make sure that this gets carried out effectively for the long term. So who is responsible? Uh, the city is. The city is. But we all collectively have to take responsibility in maintaining and upkeeping our community. So what do you do now to maintain that without the city's help? So we've been fighting the issues. We've been fighting the issues as they come. We just clean up. We just clean up. Um, now I'm looking for a lot of uh, unique changes coming in the next six to, uh, six to 12 months in which we won't have to do as much work and we just have to maintain. And where else in the district, as far as infrastructure, do you need to have work right now on? So, my district uh, has an issue with uh, about, uh, I-26. Right. Um, it's a noise ordinance. Um, we, there's, there's some things uh, on the table right now to get that fixed part of the uh, highway uh, program. Um, so, our things are crossed right now to address that issue as well. As well as we have diverse uh, streets. Some of the streets aren't owned by the city, they're owned by the state. So proper signage um, will help out in our district as well. So uh, with the infrastructure and the flow of traffic and getting certain things addressed like sidewalk issues, uh, um, potholes and things of that nature. For years, my district has been fighting fights and what they ran into, well, this is owned by the state. Well, this is owned by the city. Enough is enough. We're going to put signage up. This is who owns this. This is who owns that. Now we got lines of uh, we we develop uh, contact information, um, points of contact. So now we can be proactive in addressing these issues. Where exactly does the signage need to be in the district right now? So anywhere where the state where the state takes over, and anywhere just like you would 
um, coming to the city. If you ride down Ashley Foster Road, you will see a sign say Dorchester County. Sure. Right. So the mindset is it needs to be just like that inside our district. If I'm running, if I'm driving down Otrano and at the end of Otrano it turns into uh, Charleston County and not North Char- not the city of North Charleston, that part needs to be identified as soon as we enter, just like you would in the gates of any city. And that, that part really blows my mind, and I just found that out last week. Like, wow. Um, so a lot of this stuff, it's just simply properly addressing, properly having the right voice to get a lot of these things identified so we know who the right point of contacts are so we can have our issues not just heard but properly addressed. Hey, Wig, how many sidewalks do you currently need in District 3? So right now, <laughs> we definitely need one on Deer Park. Um, the sidewalk issue is something that we'll continue to target and monitor and implement. But right now, we do need one effectively in Deer Park for our kids that's walking to school, uh, walking to the school bus here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry about the delay here. But let me go back to the noise ordinance wall. What study should be done on that right now in your mind? So they've already done all the studies. Um, that's the craziest part about it. Um, my, our current councilwoman has done an excellent job of addressing and attacking and fighting all these issues. Right? The unfortunate part about it, now they're starting to get it addressed. So we got to make sure they're carried out. And not just carried out, but a maintain a maintenance plan that we have proper point of contacts that we can call so we can continuously maintain our community. What maintenance plan plan would be ideal for the district now? Service and response. <laughs> um, that's the biggest thing. Having a uh, service plan uh, to service these ponds so they're properly filtered, they're properly addressed, um, so that Five years from now, we won't have flooding issues. You know, a lot of this stuff, uh, by design, should last a long period of time. And unfortunately, it doesn't because of lack of maintenance. And a lot of our issues became came across of who's responsible, who's not responsible. But now that we have, we will have a new mayor. We will have a new city council. Now we can have a new voice as well inside our district. And uh, the city of North Tolson, as you know, currently has a, a budget of $160 million. Have you ever managed a budget of that type before? Uh, yes, sir. So my background, I got a military background. Um, <laughs> when I was 25, I managed all naval assets on the West Coast. When I was 26, I managed all naval assets in, on um, inside the Middle East and um, in the 7th Fleet. I'm sorry, in 5th Fleet. So I'm used to managing budgets. That's not a hard. That's not a hard task. The hardest task that I look at is us being a unified voice. If my district has a unified voice, which I am pleading to become that voice, now we can make an impact not just in our district but in our city as well. Will you, Mr. Maurice, as councilman, actually put a, a line item in the budget for capital projects for your district? Yes. Um, I feel that, so right now there's already, I think it's 1.2 uh, million set aside for each district. So for me, it's like, what are we currently doing with the money allotted for us before we ask for more money, right? So for me, to allocate, to allocate the resources to our, our infrastructure needs, our, our, our pond needs, our, our immediate needs right now. That's more important than anything than than creating more uh, resources or, or building any uh, uh, ethicists or anything like that. We have to stabilize what we already have. We have to maintain what we have, and we have to be good stewards of what we already have. Now, how do you invest in workforce and actually include that into the budget for your district? So, I I honestly believe that. The city of North Charleston employees should be living in the city of North Charleston. Um, I am all for individuals in my district creating job opportunities for individuals in my district. We have small businesses in my district. We have uh, hotels. We have uh, we have uh, hospitals. All this inside my district. 
I believe that a rally cry should be called out. Come get these jobs. Um, as we identify maintenance needs, that should open up more job avenues. Um, I believe that we need to have a, an, an intense training program that create a pipeline from our schools to the city so these kids that grow up in my district can come back and serve their district. So all of this stuff is what I want to bring to our city as well as my district. Now, what public-private partnership will you develop before that? I can't hear you say again. Yeah, what public-private partnership would you develop for that? So, right now, the funniest part, I don't believe we need a lot of private partnerships. I believe that we need to use what's already got, uh, already at hand. I believe that we need to develop our kids. Um, if we increase the graduation rate, we increase the quality of our employees. If we train, if we train the teenagers, they're literally the next evolution of our workforce. So I don't think we need to bring in a private company. I think we need to bring in resources to properly develop our kids to properly serve our community. Now, Mr. Maurice, what is the graduation rate right now in your district, district three? So the graduation rate inside my district. One second. Um, thing you should say that um, my district literally has uh, with the new zoning requirements my district has literally fell into all the title ones has fallen into uh, Charleston County School District which is a low performing district um, though the principals and the teachers have done exceedingly a lot of work to uh, bring their graduation rate up uh, bring their retention rate up um, it's still below average. Our numbers are still below average. Our kids are still dropping out of school. Our, our kids are still not being able to magnify or uh, utilize the resources that are available. Our kids are still not performing at a high level. Our kids aren't even performing at a high level statewide. So I, my district, and this is another thing, my district, uh, when it comes down to education, is now a part of Charleston County School District 4, which all the Title I schools in North Charleston sit in, and all of them are low performing. Now, again, I applaud each principal. They're doing a tremendous work, but I believe it's our job to give the community the resources for these kids so the kids can be better, if that makes sense. Mr. Maurice, as you know, there's some talk about potentially, it, it's been thrown out there that the city, that some people want the city of North Charleston to basically separate themselves from the Charleston County School District. Would you be in support of that? Definitely. Um, I'm all for North Charleston. I'm a North Charleston local kid. Uh, born and raised, got a business in North Charleston, currently reside in North Charleston, and reside here for over the last eight years. Um, yes. I, I believe that the Charleston, the local of the current school district, does not speak for the kids, does not speak for North Charleston. Hello, about Rashi. Oh, no. um, so I really feel that it's time for North Charleston to support North Charleston. But Mr. Maurice, how many school facilities would you need for that? Uh, say again? I, I can no, hear you. I'm sorry. No worries. What, how many school facilities would you need for North Charleston to have its own school district? So I believe we have enough facilities right now. I don't think those facilities were adequately used. Um, and the funding that's been uh, dispersed to these schools, I think, is okay. I, I believe that North Charleston can generate enough money to self-sustain these schools as well. Um, it, again, it's about pride. It's literally about pride. Um, if we want change, we have to be the evidence of change. So we have to take ownership of what that change will look like. So I believe we start with what we got and then go from there. But, Mr. Maurice, do you realize that doing that would actually cost the city a lot of money to just break away from this Charleston County School District? You know, North Charleston paid more school taxes than any other city in the county. So just imagine this. What if our tax money went straight to our school district? Because it's, it's unfortunate we pay more taxes, but we get less from the school district. 
And how much money are we getting from the school district currently? Well, each each school gets a lot of um I couldn't tell you that figure off the top of my head. Um, but each school gets a lot of X amount of dollars. Uh, one of the issues that happened was that funds were allocated uh properly. The, I'm sorry, in one second. I thought I lost you. Yeah, you get there, you get there, you get there. Yeah. Um, I apologize. Um one of the issues the school board is currently having is they haven't been at properly out of the funds. You have schools in Mount Pleasant that get the same amount of funds as schools in North Charleston, if not more, and North Charleston has more needs than the schools in Mount Pleasant. It's it's just unfair. And it's time for unfairness to stop. I believe in equality. I believe education is something that no man should be robbed of. And I believe that it should be equal for all. And it's, it hasn't been. It hasn't been when I was in school. When I was in school in North, uh, North Charleston, North Charleston became independent from the school district just because of the amount of revenue we self-generate. What happens when these kids and their talents can produce the revenue that's needed to sustain their booster programs, to sustain their schools? They don't even get an opportunity right now. What happens when these principals get an opportunity to really run their schools and, and, and literally make an impact on these kids' lives without the restraints that they have from the school district. I, I honestly feel that we haven't had an equal, we haven't had equal sharing of, of finances, resources, and education. And how much money would New North Charleston need to keep this school, the independent school district, theoretically afloat? So I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. Um, as we identify that and identify a budget. We also have to identify how we keep that cash flow going, how we how we keep these revenues going to sustain the school system. Now, well, let me ask you this, name, Mr. Maurice. What is the city's fund balance right now? So, I am not aware of the fund balance as of right now. Um, I know that there has been a request for a forensic audit. Uh, after this election, so far as funding on any level, whatever's reported, I'm going to trust as is um, till that forensic audit is done. And what else would you see? What else do you want to see with this forensic audit if it were to be completed? So truth and reporting. At the end of the day, truth and reporting. Once we have truth and reporting, we can establish a baseline. Now we can build. We can truly build. A lot of our issues really can't be addressed till we have truth and reporting. A lot of issues as far as funding can't be addressed till we have truth and reporting. Right now, all we all we got is what they report, not what they do. And I'm not I'm not here to downgrade, I'm not here to mitigate, I'm not here to accuse. I am here to be a voice for now and the future going forward. Now, and you talk about those issues. Let me go back to crime. So to reduce crime, how would you ask the police chief to place multiple quick response uh, police, you know, officers throughout the throughout your district to reach higher crime neighborhoods faster? I don't think that fixes crime. If you look at it right now, we have police stations in our high impact crime groups. So why do we need more? What we need is proper training for the police on conflict resolutions. We need a better relationship with the community and the law enforcement. Again, this is about unity. How do you fix crime? You got to get people to care about each other, right? But also, you fix crime by improving our education, education reform. You, you fix crime by economic development, create more jobs. This is how you really affect crime. And these things have not been addressed. Hmm. But the things that have been addressed are already in place. It's funny when you go around the city, even in my district. Uh, one of the most quote unquote trouble areas of North Charleston is Ochino. We got a police uh, station right there on Ochino. How much quicker of a response do they need? You're less than a mile away from anything, right? So it isn't about those resources. It's about if we really are, if we're really fixated on fixing crime, we need to have a more proactive, uh, a proactive approach on economic development, education reform. That has never changed. High crime, it's low-income area, 
and not not highly educated leaders. So how many jobs do you need currently in, in District 3? Say that one more time. Yes, sir. How many jobs do you currently need in District 3? There isn't a number. I believe every every person should have the opportunity for employment and advancement in employment. I believe that um, it's it becomes a housing issue and not a job issue. Um, I believe it's it's about you have a right to stay here and that you should be able to afford to stay here. Um, so I, I really don't feel that it's about jobs. Our area doesn't have an industrial area, so we don't have a lot of companies moving into this area. We have a lot of residents where we're the community. Um, the businesses guard the outskirts of the area, and it's not a lot of them. So far as jobs, I believe that it's the city's responsibility to produce more jobs within the city. And my job is to help protect my district through service impact and improvement of my district. So where exactly do you have the land for affordable housing? And where do you have the land for workforce housing? So inside my district, we don't. Um, being truthful about it, we really don't. We don't have a lot of room for growth. Um, after this new development comes in, it's, it's traffic's going to be quite interesting. Um, and that's another issue. So inside my district, we don't. Inside the city, that's a whole different conversation that we need to address. How can you actually fix traffic around the district without necessary infrastructure? Oh, man. Uh, so, unified traffic lights would help. Uh, syn synchronized traffic lights would help. Um, proper policing of um, resources. Uh, sidewalks would help. Keep, keeping a lot of pedestrians out of the roads would help. Um, people, bike riders, dog walkers, now they have a nice, they have a way of walking without being in the middle of the uh, road. But because of the rapid growth of uh, North Charleston itself and Charleston, it's very hard to say what, what we can do to improve traffic. But as long as more people are coming here, something that we got to be prepared for. But there's things that we can do in preparation for it i.e. sidewalks, um, i.e. traffic lights. Um, these are things that we can do right now that will speed things up so your commute isn't as terrible. Right now, I'm getting out of Green Ridge. If you go there at 715, you're going to sit there for a good 30 minutes. It's ridiculous. Synchronized lights will allow that. It will cut that time in half by 15 minutes. And where do you synchronize those lights right now? What traffic's intersections? Say that one more time. Yeah, what in traffic intersections can you actually synchronize those lights right now? Well, I would, I would, I would be at the forefront of synchronizing the lights on Otrano and Green Ridge. Um, by doing that, that allow that allow for easier flow, faster flow. Um, if you look at it inside my district, that right there is the bottleneck of North Charleston. So by synchronizing those lights. Now we can push more traffic through. So now more traffic at that. So if the interstate's backed up, now more traffic can hit Rivers Avenue, right? And if Rivers Avenue backed up, the traffic that's come from Blue Street can hit University and avoid some of it. Like, synchronized traffic lights allow for even flow. Maurice Ray, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to Point 10's Close Ups. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Again, to my district, November 7th, vote for me, Mo Ray. It's a new day with Maurice Ray. Thank you again for the opportunity. Many blessings. Thank you.